What's going on guys? In this video we're going to look at a Raspberry Pi 4 and specifically we're going to work on getting this to boot from USB. Uh, I want to do that for a few reasons. One, believe it or not, you're going to get better performance, especially when we start talking about things like a USB attached SSD and or NVMe M2 in a USB enclosure. And two, I have a lot of USBs because it's one of my side businesses is a USB business. Uh, bootableusbs.com if you haven't checked it out check it out today and i want to ultimately create a i haven't thought of a name yet but i tend to use the word ultimate for some of my stuff so it's going to be like the ultimate raspberry pi usb where we're going to have loads of distributions uh in a multi-boot configuration maybe use something like berry boot i haven't even started that series yet this is kind of the first video in the raspberry pi series or what will likely become a series anyway. Um, I am doing something a little different here today. I have my webcam hooked up. I'm out in the garage office. I actually have a brand new cell phone and I've hooked that up to the uh, OBS studio using um, video.ninja. I just did a video as well on that. So if you guys aren't familiar and you maybe you want to learn how to hook up your cell phone to OBS uh, to use the camera, use the microphone and or both, whatever, uh, check out my video. I'll link a card here. It's a quick three minute video or so and we'll get you up and running with your cell phone on OBS in no time. All right guys, so this video, I have a Raspberry Pi and that's what you see here uh, down below. I don't know where I'm at here. There you go, right there. <laughs> that is my Pi 4 hooked up to a uh, eight inch touch screen. I think it's eight inch, seven and a half, eight inch. I have several of these, so I'm, I wanna get to start using them again for different projects. Um, I have so many things in my head when it comes to Raspberry Pis, like stuff I want to do. But first and foremost, before we go down some type of wormhole here, I want to get this working to boot from USB. Uh, doing a little bit of research, it seems like it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. As a matter of fact, on the newer firmware, it's capable right out of the box. So how it sits right now, uh, we have a fresh install of the newest version of Raspbian. So we're going to do a couple things here, guys. First, we're going to just do a uh, sudo apt-get upgrade dash y and this will just make sure we have the latest and greatest packages so we'll let this run and when it's done we'll come back with our next command all right guys the uh, apt upgrade has completed so now we need to check and see if our eeprom is up to date so let's go ahead and run a command for that. It's going to be sudo rpi hyphen eeprom update. All right, guys, that took a, a little while. It took about five or ten minutes or so there. Um, now we need to check and see if our eeprom is up to date. So we're going to run sudo rpi-eeprom-update. This will give us the current package, which we're sitting at a build from uh, December of 2022. And then the latest package is of January 2023. Uh, we may be able to boot... I'm trying to remember the date. It was probably 2021. I don't remember. It may work already, but we might as well go ahead and update the EEPROM here. So if you run that command again and follow it by dash A, that should go ahead and uh, update the EEPROM. Let's see what it says here. EEPROM updates pending. Please reboot to apply this update. And if you wanted to cancel it, you can do that. So we can go ahead and reboot the Raspberry Pi now by doing a sudo reboot, and that should kick off a reboot. And there we go. We'll watch it uh, from the webcam here. Webcam, the cell phone. Uh, by the way, guys, I did switch from uh, iPhone to back to Android. I know a lot of people disagree with that, but uh, I'm not an iPhone guy. I'm not an Apple guy. Probably never will be. Nothing against it. Great hardware. Uh, just not a fan of the, number one, the cost and everything being so proprietary. Uh, anyway, yeah, I went with the uh, Razer Plus. Got a flip phone back to the old school days there. It's still getting used to it, but I automatically just enjoy the feel again of being back on a 
Android device. All right, so we'll give this a few seconds here to reboot, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. A uh, little bit concerned here because the screen is blank now, but I do have a putty session or an SSH session active again. So we're just going to roll with it and see where we're at here. RPI, EE prom, update. I'm going to run sudo. See if it actually performed the update. It did. So it's got the latest firmware. Uh, that means we should be able to boot from USB, but I'm not sure why the screen's not coming up. Maybe that's a firmware issue with the screen or something now. So um, interesting. We'll have to figure that out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, image a USB, and then I'll try to boot from that and see where we're at. But you know what? I'm going to reboot it one more time just for good measure. But at least we know that the uh, the EEPROM update did work. So let's do another sudo reboot. And see if we get anything on the screen. I mean, the screen illuminated, so it did light up. Uh, there was just nothing on it. So there we see it's going through a reboot process. Uh, let's see what happens here. We'll give it a few seconds. That's a good sign. <laughs> All right, while that's cooking here, guys, I'm going to use one of my uh, Cushion drives. I've got 128 gig USB 3 Cushion drive. I probably won't use this long term. Uh, there we go. There we go. Never doubted it for a second. <laughs> All right, so I am going to get this um, flash drive in my USB hub here, and then we'll go ahead and image this bad boy. So let me go ahead and bring up the Raspberry Pi imager. Scared me for a second there, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and change this out. Bear with me here, guys. Okay, there we go. So let me change my window capture. I'm going to put that on the RPI imager. Okay, let's make that a little bigger. There we go. All right, so... I'm just going to go ahead and use Raspbian again. That's fine for now. Raspberry Pi OS, I mean. Uh, choose the storage. This time we will use the 128 gig flash drive. Next, edit settings. Already got all that entered in there. That's great. So let's go ahead and say yes. We're going to use those custom settings. Go ahead and wipe out my flash drive. No worries. This will probably take several minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the uh, video. Let this finish, and then we'll see if we can boot from USB. We'll be right back. All right, that has finished the writing of the image to the USB drive. So let's go ahead and eject that drive, and then we'll see if our work has been a success here and see if we can boot from the USB drive. So I have ejected that. I'm going to go ahead and click Continue on the Raspberry Pi imager. We can go ahead and pop out the USB. There we are. And now I will power off the Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it because we're going to be booting from a new image after this anyways. And love these cases, by the way. I've got several of these guys. We're going to pop off the fan. We'll set that guy aside. And then I'm going to pull the SD. There we go. And put this guy back together. Maybe. All right. We'll put the fan back on. This is always the challenging part, but we'll get there. Okay, one leg there, one leg there. There we go. All right, now let's put our USB in. Make sure we got it the right way. Just like so. All right, with any luck, we should be able to boot up to this Raspberry, or excuse me, Raspberry Pi OS via USB. Let's try it out. Powering up now. moment of truth all right guys it's been a while since i started this video but i wanted to update and kind of finish this out um 
I guess to talk about an issue, I have the Raspberry Pi, or I had the Raspberry Pi inside of this case, and it has a touch screen on it, which obviously is gonna draw more power. Uh, it gets its power from the same power supply as the Raspberry Pi. And when you're using a USB, you need to make sure that you have enough amperage on that power supply available to power the SSD effectively. So I guess what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way here is I had a lot of issues uh, when I had the touchscreen plugged in along with the uh, USB SSD. It was extremely slow and it wouldn't boot with the touchscreen on. So long story short, I just disconnected the touchscreen and used a mini or micro HDMI. And now I have it up on my screen here and this thing boots super fast at this point. Um, way faster than the SD card for sure. So it definitely performs extremely well. Um, just note that if you're gonna use this with a touch screen or anything like that, you're likely gonna need to upgrade that power supply or find a separate way to power that touch screen. Because in my case, it definitely did not have enough power to run the uh, SSD USB along with that touch screen. But if you don't have that touch screen, you're using an external monitor via one of the HDMI ports, it is beautiful. So this thing flies, guys. Now that I have this working, I'll probably start to uh, come up with the Berry Boot or a different multi-boot USB uh, Raspberry Pi series where we look at a bunch of different images and then we'll have the option to multi-boot between them on a single USB SSD device. Also guys, you probably saw earlier in the video where I was using uh, USB like this. And as part of my troubleshooting, I switched to this super fast NVMe M2 drive um, attached via USB 3.0. This would have worked pretty well as, as well, like fast. Okay, now let's test the boot speed of just a USB, excuse me, a USB 3.0 stick. We just tested the uh, NVMe M2 drive via USB. So for comparison's sake, let's go ahead and power this on and see how fast it boots with the 3.0 stick. Here we go. As I mentioned uh, when I was testing with the 3.2, well, it is 3.2 capable, but we're obviously getting 3.0 speeds. Um, not enough power in my power supply to power both the touchscreen and the USB. So we weren't getting the full capability out of that. But as you can see, the USB 3.0 stick boots plenty fast as well. We'll just give it a second, see how long it takes to load the full desktop. Already, it's definitely not as fast as the NVMe M2 drive, but we'll just enjoy the music while this loads up. Starting some services now, so it is progressing. I would expect a little better performance in this, even though this is only USB 3.0. Uh, perhaps if I had the correct power supply, that would help. It takes a little more power to run the um, USB, especially the USB M2 that's attached via that enclosure um, as opposed to running it off an SD card. So here it goes, it's booting up. I don't know that this is faster than an SD card, the USB 3.0 stick, but I don't think it's any slower. Maybe a little faster than booting from SD, or maybe it's right in the same ballpark. But definitely that M2 drive, the NVMe, is faster, like quite a bit faster. So we'll work with that on our project and the videos moving forward where we're going to take a look at, I'm not sure if it's going to be Berry Boot or another flavor of a multi-boot solution for the Raspberry Pi, but we're going to take a look at multiple images and the main focus will be how, at least initially, the main focus will be how to perform and configure a multi-boot configuration and setup on the Raspberry Pi. All right, guys, I know this was... Uh, well, you might not know, but I started this video a long time ago, so it was a long delay for me to get it out. And again, a lot of that was just 
me being a, a dumbass and not realizing that I didn't have enough power going to this guy, even though I had a warning indicator. <laughs> um, anyways, we figured it out and I'm going to order the right power supply if I can't find it. And then if it ends up working well with the touchscreen, we'll probably revert back to that for the uh, demonstrations of the multi-boot configuration. But for now, we're running it on the big screen and the USB is kicking ass. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want more Raspberry Pi content, drop me a comment and definitely subscribe because I've got a lot of good things coming on the way. Thank you